think something like that. And we had a player that was shooting an incredibly high percentage, okay, at the beginning of the year, probably in the in the 50s, in the November, December, t- December time frame. He'd really worked that offseason to become a better player. Well, we had a lot of guys that were going in the gym extra. They were staying after practice and they were working on their shots. So some of our best shooters, most of our best shooters were staying in the gym after practice really every day, every day. And, and this one young guy wasn't. He would practice would end and he'd be done. And he'd give me, well, I'm working out on my own. Well, that shooting percentage started to drop to the point where he was a very unreliable three-point shooter by the end of the year. And his percentages had dropped to the low 30s, high 20s. It was not an accident. Your practice is not enough. That's one of the great stories in my mind. And you have to have an attitude in the weight room. You have to have an attitude on the, on the bike or the treadmill or the EFX, you know, whatever it is. You've got to have an attitude in sprints. You've got to have Um, I live about uh, 10 to 15 minutes away from my office. There are a lot of ways I can get into work. And in uh, the second semester of Mia Hamm's senior year, I decided to go through Umstead Park. Um, it's a beautiful park. And every now and again, I don't want to you know, go the, the classic shortcut route. I want to go through a beautiful park. And so I'm going through this park. It's late February. It's kind of cold out. It's relatively early in the morning. And all of a sudden, I'm driving through the park, and it's very peaceful. And out of the corner of my eye, I can see this player going five and back, 10 and back, 15 and back, 20 and back, 25 and back. And I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, that that looks like Mia. So I pulled over in the parking lot, and I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, it is Mia. Between all these exhausting sprints, you could see her hunched over, hot air shooting from her lungs, sweat flying off her brow, and I was just so impressed. Without her even realizing I was there, I drove into work. I scribbled a note to her. I dropped it in the mail, and I forgot about it. Ten years later, after Mia had become world famous, she wrote a book called Go for Goal, and she mailed me a copy of that book. And there in the breastplate of the book was the note I'd written her. The vision of a champion is someone who is bent over, drenched in sweat at the point of exhaustion when no one's watching. The final measure of athletic greatness is not what you do in practice. Everybody is working hard in practice for the reasons that Colleen is sharing, because there are people there are watching you and encouraging you, giving you gold stars or patting you on the back. Everyone gets that in practice. I knew Mia was going to ascend. I knew she was because all of a sudden, this is what she's doing on her own. I was thinking, oh my gosh, she's going to make it. And I was so excited because I knew that her doing this on her own was her final measure to become absolutely extraordinary. And then, of course, all of us have watched that ascension.